sofa6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Out. Well, hello. Good evening. It's Monday night. It is. You can tell that because when I look at all these monitors, they've all got it's Monday night written on them in one place or another. And it is the Haze Hour, and the team is here. <laughs> Over in the cat house, as per usual, we have the one and only Chris. Cat, in other words. How are you doing tonight, Chris? I'm canny. I'm canny. Wow. See? <laughs> voice and everything. Walking about and breathing, eh? Walking about and breathing, as you do. Well, that's exactly what we want to hear. And can I ask for more? You cannot. It's very true. And sat <laughs> in the red chair. <laughs> Some red. say right, that he's that. capable of mowing the lawn without waking the neighbours up. Some say that he can re-wick a squip in under 10 minutes, but we know him as Keith. Hello, Keith. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> You're never going to forget that, are you? Oh, hey, man. It was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And it still works. Well, it, was, it, it didn't was, blow up? Or? No, I changed oh. it on Saturday. I ran it from uh, Monday to Saturday. Right. Nobody knew it was there. Mm. <laughs> well, I even amazed myself. Well, so, I'm, uh, I'm kudos, really, really pleased with that. It worked really well. Right away until Saturday when I decided I was going to change it because I was changing my juices and stuff like that. So it's all good. And Chris, Mike Brown says your hair looks lovely. Oh, thank you, Mike. See, there thank you, you go. Thank you very much indeed. See, Keith, it says Keith, yes, the master I, see, <coughs> I see that, yes. yes. Uh... It's all good, it's all good. Tonight, tonight... We're going to get quite beginnery and a little bit technical. I want to said, as I said last week, we're going to talk about batteries and chargers and try and explode some of the myths. Did you say what explode. I did there? Explode. Uh, explode <coughs> some of the myths. Explode. You say explode. <laughs> nice. Um, yes. So we're going to try and explode a few of the myths and, and, and discuss a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about bricks and mortar stores because I was out at the weekend and the proliferating, the braiding like flies. And uh, and there was a bit of a bombshell dropped on Twitter earlier on today. We're going to be talking about all of that on tonight's show, which is called the, the Here's Hour. Hour. Chris, the Here's Hour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, are you China order finish now, Chris? <laughs> they know me well in there, don't they? <laughs> Chat just said, for those of you watching on video on demand, that that was Chris putting in another order to China or wherever. <laughs> you don't do that on a Monday night, do you? Not really. What do you mean? I do it Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> corner in the market. Absolutely Sand corner in the Sun market. Sandin Sundali, free for Tesco. All oh, right. I can't it anymore because they made me change my password and I keep forgetting it. Is it not password anymore? No, you've got to <laughs> have a silly symbol, <coughs> right, and two capitals and two numbers. What's this for? Just to do your shopping. I mean, you it's joke, somebody's eh? that desperate that they want to break into my account to have some shopping, they can have it. Because <laughs> I can't get in there because I can never remember the password. <laughs> just makes you wonder sometimes doesn't it now before we've even got a start we've got a question in about oh, yeah. purple e-fests and, and which of them would I recommend and then Heiko said he believes the new purple e-fests uh, e are nothing special we'll cover that we'll get there we'll get there because we're going to cover what battery types there are so we should probably start from the beginning on that shouldn't we Chris 
I would say that's a good idea. Yes. What do you know about batteries, young fellow, my lad? Very little. Plug them in like my mobile phone each night. And then, of course, uh, I remember now with me cotton buds to clean the... Oh, yes, I've done that. I'll just check. Yeah. Let's have a look. <clears throat> we'll have a quick see. Pinch some cotton buds off me wife. Why, goodness me. Is look. it clean? There we go. Look at that. Clean as a new pin. Well done. Yes. Yes. Right. Batteries. Batteries and charging. We, in the vaping world, there you are, young sir, we in the vaping world use what everybody refers to as lithium ion batteries. All right. They're talking about all kinds in chat. I wish I wasn't reading it. It's going to distract me. Let's let's move to camera five. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, <clears throat> this site here is called Battery University. And if you go to batteryuniversity.com, you'll be able to find out everything you need to know about batteries. And I'm going to take all of the information from here because this <coughs> is good stuff. We use different batteries. We use lithium cobalt oxide which it says here is high capacity for cell phone, laptop and camera. In other words, the kind of, the kind of lithium ion batteries that have been in use for donkey's ages. But then we get <coughs> into these ones, what's known as safer chemistry. That's lithium manganese oxide, lithium iron phosphate or lifepo, and lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide. And if you can <coughs> see that lot after 16 pints, you're doing well. And this is the important part across at the right hand side where it says most safe lower capacity than than lithium cobalt but high specific power and long life they're used in power tools e-bikes ev whatever that is medical and hobbyist and the ones at the bottom the lithium titanate and what have you we don't need to mention at the moment because we don't get <coughs> to see them now <coughs> the thing is about lithium ion batteries no matter what the chemistry they all have the same kind of issues associated with them. That is to say, like any rechargeable battery, they can develop an internal short circuit, and if they do, and it's very rare, but if they do, you can get an outgassing, and sometimes what you would describe as an explosion, but it isn't. It's just, it's a burn. The gas that, that, that comes off them burns. But there are various different types of, of lithium ion batteries that we get in amongst all of that. There are, what was it we said earlier on, Chris? Nipples and flat tops. Nipples and flats. Nipples and flats. Let's talk about nipples and flats. And here on camera foo is an example of a nipple top. And it's called a nipple top because it just sticks out slightly, a little bit, like a nipple I suppose you see that mm -hmm. yeah that's a nipple top and then you have as a corollary a flat top if I put the two together the flat top is usually bigger and the nipple top sticks out the flat top doesn't you can see that <laughs> yeah can you see the difference why Keith? can't they just call it a protruding top and a flat top well I don't know always called them nipple tops. Nip we've always called them nipple tops. All right. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Yes. I suppose it's a little bit more memorable and I suppose as well it gives you a little bit of uh, a little bit of enjoyment when you go in a shop and say can I have a nipple top 18650 please it just make them wonder a little bit. The thing about a nipple top of course is it's going to be slightly longer than a flat top all other things being equal. And you might wonder to yourself, well, what's the situation with that? Well, let me tell you, and again, going back to camera four, what you gen generally see, and this is one with its clothes taken off. It's a flat top with its clothes off, and I'm going to take... It's a naked nipple. Pardon? No, it's a flat. No, it's, it's a naked flat. It's a naked flat. And I'm going to take it to bits while we're actually live. And I shall do it with my thumbnail, so I'm not using anything metallic. But as I pull this... Out, and I'm going to try and do it on camera as much as I can you'll see down here that copper strip mm -hmm. 
and that copper strip goes down to a, an integrated circuit board that's at the bottom here and that is the protection circuit that sits on the battery now a lot of people think the protection circuit is this white bit or where this little lump is <coughs> the little groove is on this battery with its it's got its overcoat taken off but if I was to pick up another protective battery here this the bottom of this ultra fire ultra fi you'll see a groove there yeah. that's where the protection circuit sits it doesn't sit at the top there's also um, a bit of misinformation that this is a thermal cutout that it'll burn out it doesn't it actually carries some of the positive current down to the protection circuit at the bottom to try and keep it in one piece right so I told a lie I'm <coughs> going to use plug and filters to get this off so as you can see that top bit is just soldered on and you can see here that's going to go down to the protection circuit at the bottom and at this point I need one of my trusty knives because I'll cut the protection circuit off and then you can see what it looks like um, I'm going to say don't try this at home we're doing this so you don't have to um, because it can end up being a little bit nasty and I've done it I've just got to put a little snip in this in the right place so that I can get these out and you can see what's going on and how it all comes together I'll do it on close up your camera light as well you can see that the there is a little contact piece here so I'll just snip that this battery is now unprotected but that there is the protection circuit and that is the actual bottom of the battery all right yeah so the protection circuit sits at the bottom of the battery and what that will do is it limits the amount of current that a battery can put out so if you are using a purely mechanical mod a mod that has no uh, electronics in it if you were to use an unprotected battery then decided to do something daft like building a half ohm coil going really sub ohm on one of these older generation lithium ion batteries i.e. not an <coughs> IMR not a 30 amp not a safer chemistry battery then you could very well cause something like this older one to overheat and the protection circuitry would limit the amount of current it would put out to around about two and a half amps usually um, with a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts so that's that's the makeup if you like of a protected battery and it's actually constructed in an outer case from an inner battery with the addition of all the various different bits and bobs on so what about the makeup of the battery itself the makeup of the battery itself it's, it's actually quite I think it's quite interesting but I'm a geek and if you like the easiest way to put it is it's like phyllo pastry right and the, the phyllo pastry is a membrane between two chemicals right and there's, there's a, a cathode and an anode style the cathode will be carbon with either manganese oxide uh, iron phosphate cobalt oxide and manganese or any of the other makeups of these things right right and effectively those are attached and then just just as you would with phyllo pastry you roll it up I mean like a lot of other things that you take for granted you know it makes you think how are these things mass produced which obviously they are um, I would say very carefully <coughs> given manganese's potential for, for going off it's a, a very yeah. it's an, an, an unstable element is, man, is uh, lithium sorry not manganese lithium is a, an unstable element and it'll burn quite easily hence why you've got to safely dispose of them oh yes yes you should never just <coughs> chuck them in the bin no they should go to a and it's a really bad name for it but they should go to a wee capable facility but it's we with three e's <coughs> we um, and it's all about the, the disposal of uh, of this kind of stuff so yeah um, that's that's a, a protected standard if you like lithium ion battery but of course these days we don't use things like that much anymore and the reason that we don't need to 
is because we've got um, the likes of the EVIC and the EMOD and the MVP and the VTR and all of these other electronic mods that have protection circuitries built into them. Um, as Vapor Caper has just said, if you're using a regulated mod, then IMR batteries are the better way to go, and we'll, we'll come on to that. I'm going to try and, and cover everything you need to know. When we start talking about the safer chemistry, um, and let's, let's go back to, uh, to there, we're looking at these lithium manganese oxide, lithium iron phosphate, lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, uh, NMCs and NCOs, really, NCAs rather. Um, we generally refer to them in the vaping world as an IMR type and, and a, an example of an IMR is here. This is an AW IMR 18650 1600 milliamp hour. Um, one of the first, if not the first, IMR 18650s that were around. But you'll notice there's no protection circuitry at the bottom of this. There's no little lump there to tell you it's there. The nipple top may be a change from the way the, uh, the battery internally is supplied, but that's unprotected. And you might think, well, hang on a minute, I like the idea of a little bit of protection. But the fact of the matter is, whether you're using a kick, um, or an EVIC, or a Zorbas, any of the electronic style mods have got built in protection and you can short them out and they just switch off and indeed you'll remember Chris when we looked at those uh, short stoppers yes the mod itself when we put them in a protected mm. uh, electronic mod the mod was cutting out before the fuse would mm. blow that's mm. how quick they are that is how quick they are. So when you're working with something like a VTR, something like a Kick, uh, an Inican 134, um, even that one you've got, the I've gone forgotten cool fire. the cool fires, the cool fire one and two, both have protection circuitry in them, such that if there is a problem, they just switch off as quick as that. Probably quicker, in fact, milliseconds. If there's a short circuit, they'll switch off. They refuse to fire. So all of the protection is done in the mod. And that's, that's quite important to note. So if you're unsure about winding consistent coils and what um, amperages you're going to be drawing, then perhaps an electronic mod is more for you than a purely mechanical one. But if you are going to use a mechanical mod and go for lower resistance coils sub ohm in it if you like then you need to be looking at batteries that have got what's known as a high c rate i'm going to try and explain what that means but in actual fact it's dealt with better probably by the likes of the purple efests and that's one of the reasons i like these because it tells you that it'll do 30 amps all right and that it will also do uh, 60 amps for 75 seconds without overheating or anything along those lines. But the C rate, the discharge rate on these things, is all about the capacity uh, and the capacity for discharge. And what you really want, if you're going to be sub warming, is at least 10 C and preferably higher. Now, if you've got a 2000 milliamp hour battery for instance 1c would be to provide those 2000 milliamps of power over the period of an hour or 4000 milliamps four amps in other words for half an hour and eight amps for quarter of an hour that's how it works a 10c means that you can get 10 times the rated capacity in a short period of time and since we don't press the buttons on these for much longer than 15 <coughs> seconds then you can see 10c will probably work you quite nicely but if it's rated for 30 amps that's half the battle um, and that's going to help you out an awful lot um, a lot of times people ask me what's my favorite battery well i'll, I'll tell you what i use all of the time and that's 
Aha, uh -huh. yes, I've been on the wrong camera. That's these, the CGR 18650CH, the Panasonic one. And I'm using these E-Fests as well now. I like these too. I like them a lot. Um, and they are basically, those mm -hmm. are pretty much all I use. And that at the moment is because of the capacity. I also like the AWIMRs. They've never ever let me down. And these are the ones that we've tried to make explode. I don't know how many times. And we've never managed it yet, have we, Chris? Absolutely So, not. Just, just out of interest or curiosity, what would a battery look like in a disposable e-cig? Um, well, it's an easy way to find out. I mean, would that just be one of those little disc batteries? Or? No. Tell you what, we'll take one to bits after the break, shall we? Right. We'll do that. We shall can I throw some <coughs> questions to you from chat before you go to a break? Yes, of course you can. Go for it. Um, I've got a couple here. Lamental um, has asked, where do you stand on the IMR versus protect protected batteries choice for use in mechanical mods and also hybrid batteries like the Pani PD and PF650s? That's from Lamental. It's an interesting one. I I made a choice a while ago because my eyesight's not what it was and everybody knows I've got fingers like bananas. And I, to be honest, I lose count when I'm coiling. I tend to use now, everything has got either a kick in it, a Zorbass on it, or I'm using uh, a wattage controlled mod. I very rarely go mechanical. If I was to go all mechanical though, I would be using either my panties or the E-Fests or the IMRs um, because at the, at the wattage I like, everything tends to be running 12, 13, 14 watts and I wouldn't want to be using a protected battery because I can't make them trip out with you know a 1.1, 1.2 ohm coil. So you've got to be looking at using safer chemistry if you're going to be working purely mechanical. Was there another one, Chris? Um, just a comment, really, from Disco Dares, and I think it's something we probably will cover before the end of the show. Um, could you define sub on to the viewers? Because there could be some people watching on YouTube, new people who don't understand what sub on vaping is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, more than happy to do that. As, as we know, that there are basically two major parts to any ASIG. There's the battery and there's the coil. Everything else is just, that's all changeable. But there is a coil, which if you watched last week's show, you'll have seen Keith making one. And it's basically just a, a helix of wire that has a resistance to it and heats up. Now, normally that resistance will be somewhere around two ohms. If, if you understand what an ohm is, that's, it's, it's a measure of resistance. It would, in normal terms, it's around about two ohms. That would be where, um, where your Aspire would be, it would be where your iClear 30 would be, where any of the, the already built devices, uh, atomizers you get, they're around two ohms. Some might be 2.2, some might be 1.8, some might be 1.6. The majority of um, electronic mods will work with resistances as low as 1 ohm. Some will go down to 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 of an ohm. But once you get below that ohm, that 1 ohm resistance, down to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, it's sub ohm, less than 1 ohm. And what that does is it heats up a lot hotter, it draws a lot more current, from your battery and it makes your battery work that little bit harder that's that's basically it and you can achieve the same results as sub ohm by using a power controlled mod an evic a copper the zorbas the kick all of these kinds of things the mvp the vtr and so on and so on and so forth um, and there, there is a calculation that you can do. I'm not going to get into it now because maths is boring. 
V equals I over R, the usual Ohm's law, and that'll tell you how much current you're drawing for a given resistance at a given voltage, assuming you know what the voltage is. Is that is that clear enough, Chris, or do I need to go further? No, I even understood. Thank you. No problem. So sub ohm is less than an ohm, it's hotter. You can do this. You could do the same by raising the voltage or by raising the wattage at which you vape, because that's exactly what's happening as you drop the resistance, you're using more watts, more power gets hotter and it gives you to a degree better better results depending on what the results are that you're looking for um anything more chris now or we'll no right that's it for now we'll go to the adverts and when we come back we'll, we'll take your disposable to bits right i have right. a purity in here <coughs> which frankly is shite <coughs> so i'll drop that i'll take that to bits I'll start doing it while the adverts are on. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. If we don't come back in a couple of minutes, I've chopped my finger off and gone to hospital. See you in two. The Safer6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Hour. And you catch me, I decided against doing the puritane, and I'll, I'll show you why, because I can. Uh, the puritane is all metal, and I was just not going to be able to get down that without, I got the Dremel out, but I'll take that to bits for, for next week or the week after, and then we can see what's inside one. So I've decided to go with the Vipe, and this one's uh, had it, it's died, so it has. I'll just move these charges out of the way a little. Then we're, because uh, I'll come to them later. Right, get those batteries out of the way as well, David. It's completely off the cuff and unscripted. So here we go. And let's see what's there. If I had plastic scissors, I'd be using them, but I haven't, so I'm not. And this is what's inside a vape. Like I say, if I cut me, cut me fingers off, you know me address, don't you, Chris, for the ambulance? I know where you are. Right. right. That's the size. You can see how far down that's gone on that vape. That's the size of the uh, the atomizer in it. And now I've got to be careful as I cut down this mega huge battery because I don't want to split the battery open. My own camera, I am. Right. And what you are seeing is the size of battery that is in a vape. And I'll show you the coil as well in a second. I'm sure somebody will be upset with me for doing this. Did it before though when they first came out to compare the Vipe and the uh, Enjoy King. I love it when chat sends the program off down another uh, another angle. I do it all the time. Well, it's fine. I do actually like it. It's great because it means we're covering what they want to see. 
and I'm hoping this is not going to get too dirty. Here we Leave go. the keeper. I know you say was going to ask about the metal scissors, but I took the plastic ones off him for now. He was making too many paper aeroplanes with them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the basic problem was me trying to cut the dog's hair with them because they don't like that. There you go. <laughs> I shall pull the rest of this to bits and then you can see that's that's just the wadding that the juice gets plugged onto. And by the way, the battery in this is completely buggered. It's flat as a f the proverbial. And if I just pull this here up I should be able to get the coil out there it is and you'll not be able to say much of that I don't think and I'll try and zoom in on it then you can see what's going on and it'll give you some idea of why these things don't last very long that's not going to focus all that well I don't think the coil is tiny you're talking about a, a micro coil gone completely mad that's it but that section there is the battery. Yeah? That bit there, if you just look at right. the top right, Keith, you'll see. That section there is the battery. And just for completeness, I'll put an 18650 beside it. Yeah. All right? That's the difference in size. God. It is absolutely uh. minuscule. <coughs> Ridiculously God. small. That's an 18650 beside it. That there is the battery in a vape. And believe me, the batteries in any Cigar Lake are no bigger than that. Now it might, if we're very fortunate, it might have some writing on. And indeed it has. I don't know whether you'll be able to make that out. It says, it's a 68380D, 3.7 volts, 0 0.33 watt hours. Is what it says on there. That's it. That's the size of the battery. And as Vapor Caper has said, and that is why Cigar Lakes are shite. Um, Fomalco said sub ohm at DD. If I sub ohm that, it would, I can almost guarantee you, it would go pop. That's, that's the size that's of the battery, the battery in there. Right. Now, the fact is, I don't think that's a primary cell. I think that's a rechargeable. Oh. I think right. that is a rechargeable cell. Well, how's that? Simply because <coughs> it's cheaper now to make a rechargeable battery of that size than it is to make a primary cell of that size. And much less risky. Right, well, maybe I'm thick, but would, wouldn't you think if they were putting a rechargeable battery in a disposable <laughs> e-cig that there'd be some facility to recharge it? Yep. Well, it's a different market, it, You see? Well, yeah. But uh, they, they have done, Keith, let's go back to camera four. <laughs> and this is the rechargeable version. Now, right. When you look at it, you look at that battery, and you look at the, the stick of that SIG, try and, get them, try and get them there, there you go. Look at the battery, and, and, and you look at the, uh, the SIG yes. itself, if I put them the right way around, you can see. Yes, you It's can. only going to be the same size, isn't it? Yes. Only going to be the same size. They are tiddly-widdly, and... I really don't want to pull this reload to bits, but if need be, I will, and we'll have a look. I'll do that. I'm not going to do it this week. I'll have a look at it um, next week or the week after, and we'll pull the reload to bits and see whether it's got the same battery in it that the disposable has. My betting is it will have. Um, Heiko says, Dave, they are rechargeable. I charged an Enjoy King at 0.1 amps. However, I would warn chat, please don't try it. Let Dave do it and he see, but don't anybody try charging 
a disposable to see if it charges. Um, again, before I forget, Dave, at some point, Gillis has asked, can you please ask Dave to explain how two coils reduce ohms? Yes. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that now, shall I? Might yeah. as well, while it's there and in my mind, how do two coils reduce ohms, reduce resistance? Yes, okay. This is where you're going to have to bear with me because none of this is prepared. All right. On a normal circuit, if you can see this, you would have, I don't know whether you can see it. There's your plus. Hang on. Try zooming in a little bit. There's your plus. And then you've got your coil. And that goes down. There's your minus. So there's one path. And let's, let's just say, I'm going to take it in terms of marbles, all right? That Better than light bulbs. There's, there's 10 marbles, and they will go down this tube and round this little coil and out the other side, right? And they'll do that in one minute. Oh, Christ. Uh -huh. Minute. There you go. One minute. I'm that looks horrible. I'm watching it on screen and it looks horrible. But let's say you can get ten marbles down there, and that's a measure of its resistance across this coil. So ten marbles a minute will go down. If you had another coil, because this is what holds it up going around the corners, if you had another coil there of exactly the same number of turns leading into that tube. If there's only 10 marbles a minute can get through that one, you can get another 10 marbles a minute through there. So that 10 would become 20, right? Which means that the resistance of the, the, the coily bits to marbles has been halved because you can get twice as many marbles down. Is this helping? I think so. Well, not no for a couple of minutes. Find out from chat. It's helping me understand. I'm pretty thick. It's going around there. DD's lost his marbles. I lost my marbles <laughs> long enough since. So that's that's what happens. It it allows twice the amount of current to flow because it's got two paths. And if you were to put a third one on, you would get more marbles through. There would be a limit as to how many you could get down there. And there is actually um, a calculation that you can do. Thank you, DJ, DJ Reptile UK says he gets the impression DD's explained this once or twice before. It's a nice analogy. It's the simplest way of doing it because I don't want to get into what is known as, and I'm writing this upside down. While you're writing that, Moonlit's come up with a good one as well. Uh -huh. Water analogy or a road analogy works, carries twice as many cars if you've got a bypass. Yes. It's a good one as well. Yes. That's right, Yoda 1970s. Got some clever people in they are, chocolate. they are. Yoda said, in other words, you can get the marbles through in half the time. That's Ohm's law. That is what it's all about, is Ohm's law. Written upside down I as well. I must say, I'm impressed with the upside down writing. Thank you. Um, yes, I thought that was very good as well. Framey's asking, why <coughs> do you have to counter twist your second coil when you make a dual coil? You don't. You, do, you don't. You could, you could, you could have them both the same hand, you can have them different hands, it doesn't make a difference. The thing is, to get the best, kind of the best um, performance out of it, you need them both to be, the coils, the wire in the coils need to be the same length, so that they're the same resistance. I'm hoping that's helping. I think I'm just, so. just checking chat to see if anybody's going, no, that's rubbish, or <laughs> we don't understand what he's saying. No, they're starting to talk about electrons. Yes, electrons do act like a wave, like a stream splitting into two. It's exactly right. Um, but that, that's it's the simplest way I can put it. It's, it's how quick the marbles can get through the tube. Um, and that's why it ends up... Look up Ohm's Law. You'll find there's Ohm's Law calculators all the over the place. Chat for that. Oh, lovely. Thanks, Chris. Um, Gillis has actually said it's helped. So there you go. And he put the question. Okay, that's brilliant. That's that's great. That's all we need to know. Um, which brings us hurtling towards charges. Now, 
charging a lithium ion battery and it doesn't matter whether it's safe for chemistry, protected, unprotected, don't make a heap of the difference. You should not charge them beyond 4.2 volts. When they get to 4.2 volts, the charger should stop charging. And I have here two that do exactly that. And I need to zoom out a little bit. I had that shot all set up before the show, but never mind. Take the pen out of the wheel, guys. I'm advertising the garage. I've got um, a Nightcore IntelliCharger i4, which I ordered on Friday. Um, because everybody was saying how good you were, so I wanted to get one to test for myself. And my favourite of the chargers, which is the XSTAR VP1. And I'll show you why it's my favourite. Because it does what I need it to do very, very quickly indeed. For instance, if I want to check whether a battery's charged, I can simply stick it on there and zoom it in a little bit, Dave. And you can see that that battery is at four point. 2, 1 volts. It's fully charged. And you can see that it's no longer putting any current through that battery. And I've tested this with all my meters and all my oscilloscopes and everything else. And I can tell you for a certain fact there's nothing going through that battery now. I haven't done all of the testing on this IntelliCharger yet, but so far, whoops, aside from the uh, the flashing amber light, which is driving me nuts, I have to say. It's performing very well. I'll take that battery out because I know it's charged. Um, but it seems to be doing the job quite nicely. I'm quite liking the way it works. I'm going to do a full battery of tests on it to let you know whether it's working as well as it ought to. So are you saying that on those chargers you couldn't overcharge the batteries? Um, I can tell you for an absolute certain fact that that is the case. Right. Certainly with the XSTAR <coughs> VP1, in fact all of the XSTAR chargers, because I've tested them all out. You can leave a battery on that for three months and it won't overcharge. When you take it off, it'll be at 4.2 volts. Right. And I know that's right because I left the blow, I left a battery on charge when we went away on holiday. And it was right. fine. The house was still here when we got back. It hadn't blown up. And... People say you should never charge a battery unattended. You should always be around while the battery's charging. I'm going to say this now. If you buy a proper charger, you don't need to be there. If you have a charger that you think you need to be around in case it's going wrong, get shot of it and get a good one. And don't go and buy one for £2.10 off a market and expect it to work properly. Expect to pay between 16 and 25 pounds for a decent charger that you know will do the job. Go and have a look at Battery Boy's tests. He's looked at them all. Look at the Torch forums. They've looked at them all. And there are a vanishingly small number of chargers that you can put your trust in. Xstar is one. IntelliCharger is another. I am told. I'm yet to do the tests. And Peeler is another one. Those three makes appear to be the trustworthy ones. Frankly, a trust fire charger, I would, if, if you gave me one, I'd, I wouldn't even give you the back, I'd take a sledgehammer to it. Thank God they've been recalled. They're a bloody death trap looking for somewhere to happen. Am I right, Chris? I think so, yes. Yes. And I've just seen the time. So. I've just seen the time. We'll take, <laughs> take another set of adverts. Um, Heiko is saying he doesn't trust the i4 that much, although it isn't bad. I am going to do some testing on it. I am going to map it all out and make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. Thus far, when the, the three batteries I've taken to full charge on this have come off charge, they have been exactly where they should have been. They haven't overcharged and I haven't seen any current going through when they shouldn't have been, but I've got to put the scope across it yet. When I've done that, I will report back and tell you what I, what I know. But I do know that the XSTAR VP1, in fact all of the XSTARs, I've got the, uh, the WP6 here and the WP2 as well. All of the XSTARs do exactly what they're supposed to do. They charge with the proper charging route. Um, we'll take some adverts. When we get back, we might change the subject a little bit. I hope this has been useful. Back in two minutes.
with Safe for Six. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. And we're back in the room here on the Here's Hour with Kat, Keith and me, Dave Dawn. A um, couple of things that, that have come out of chat over the, the, the course of the adverts. First, somebody saying that they had a trust fire pot tested. Yeah, it would get through a pot test probably without any bother at all. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the charge profile and the way it finishes. A trust fire TR001, when I tested half a dozen of them out, because I had a fair few of them, was continuing to charge at around about a tenth of an amp once it had, re had reached 4.2 volts and I have taken batteries off TR001s at 4.25 volts. That's half a volt higher than they should be. And once you get over um, 4.3 volts, you are in real danger of thermal runaway. Um, pot testing's fine. They're, they're probably safe as houses if you don't put a battery in. If you do put a battery in, I wouldn't trust one as far as I could throw Keith, really. That's not very far, mm -hmm. Keith. The other Bear. thing as well, about leaving batteries to charge unattended or overnight. Be honest. When do you charge your iPhone? When do you charge your iPad? When do you charge your decked telephone? That stays on the charger when you're in bed, doesn't it? Oh, yes. The okay. same with laptops. How many people put their laptops on charge before they go to bed and leave them to be charged up in the morning when they get up? Everybody charges their phone overnight. They've all got lithium-ion batteries in. They've all got sensible, proper charge circuits built into them that will 99 million times out of what, 99 million and one make sure that nothing goes wrong. Seriously, the chances of something happening are so remote as to be really not worth worrying about as long as you have the right equipment. And that, I think, probably covers it. Um, anything one else? one more little thing. Um, Sleep Trees has asked, is it safe to charge an MVP overnight as it cuts off after at 4.2 it doesn't charge anymore but is it okay to leave it at 4.2 for a bit before i wake up yes in a word i do i do um all of my batteries and any e-cigs that need charging go on charge overnight and all right you know there'll be an 18650 will come out of whatever i'm using and get dropped into the charger during the course of the day but what i tend to do on a night and this is, this is absolute gospel. Whatever I've got in my hand, whatever I'm using, whatever's going upstairs with me, because, gentlemen, you know you need thinking time before you climb into bed. Follow me here. You know what I mean, don't you, don't you Keith? Sorry, I was just uh, oh, looking at some of the comments. Think, thinking time before you go to bed. You know, the thinking stool yes. that we have. Well, whatever it is I'm taking upstairs for me thinking time before I go to bed, I put a fresh battery in and take the battery out that's in it and put it on charge. 
I have never ever had an issue. I oh. routinely charge overnight. You do as well, don't you, Chris? Yes, I do. But I think it's um, down to the individual. If you're not happy and it's interrupting your sleep, worrying about it, then don't do it. Don't do it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's it it is. It's <coughs> like it's like most things. And exactly as Chris has said, if it's going to make you have a sleepless night, then fine. Do it during the daytime while you're around. If it's if it's going to worry you, don't do it. All I'm saying is, it's perfectly safe if your charges are up to the task. And certainly all of the X-Star ones and the Peeler ones that I've tested are, I'm going to be testing the, uh, the Nightcore IntelliCharger to make sure that's up to spec as well. If it's not, I'll tell you. It's that easy. Um, but there, there really is very little to be worried about um, in terms of that kind of battery. In terms of Ego style batteries where you're using a USB connector, as we said last time, always use the charger that came with the battery. That way you know you're going to be alright. And it's, it, it, it really is as simple as that. Um, but if at any time you're not sure, then yeah, keep an eye on it. It's going to take two to three hours to charge any battery at low rate, uh, at a slow charge. The, the other thing to remember as well is that there's no need to put a full charge into an e-cig battery. They don't require it. And there's no need to wait until it's fully discharged before you recharge it. You can do them at any time. There's no memory effect. And indeed, if you don't fully recharge, they'll last a bit longer. And if you don't let them run fully flat before you recharge, they'll last a bit longer. You won't get the run time out of them, but in terms of if they were going to last six months, they might last seven, if you see what I mean, if you do that. So... Yeah, I read, I read somewhere that it doesn't pay you to recharge your mobile phone up to maximum charge. Read N that somewhere. 90% will do it. Yeah. 90% mm. will do it. It's uh, you, You've no need to take it up to full charge unless you really want to. And again, it depends on, on you know how quickly you get through batteries. Um, I reckon, I reckon to get six months out of a given 18650, and to be honest, given the price of them, I think that's fairly reasonable. Um, and as Famago has said, do not ever fully discharge an 18650. It's just not worth it because that's when you can get deposits of metal inside. So I always recharge when I get down to about 3.3 volts. And on the mods I'm using, they tell you to recharge long before then. Go, Chris, yes? Yeah, but what I was going to say is a lot of mods... For example, this cool fire, it may have a way of telling me, but I wouldn't know because I never read instructions. Um, I go by time and the fact that I feel oh, that's dropping off a bit and I just immediately go and change it. Yes. You know, and you know me, I hold the record for keeping batteries the longest. Indeed. <laughs> I've, I've, I've just seen something come up in chat. Kizzy's just said that she's uh, that the, the tested batteries and they're coming out at 4.5 and 4.6 volts. Get shot of them. Dispose of them now and get your battery checked. It might also be worth checking out your multimeter, as Andy Oakley's just said. Thank you for that chat. Right, John Lonsdale has asked, can I explain the one amp and half amp switch on the X-Star chargers? Um, and yes, I can. I've also been asked by all Git which do I prefer, half amp, one amp, or or higher. Um, so let's go to closer up. Yes. Was it? Yes. It wasn't old Git. I do apologise. Giving people the wrong names here. Okay, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Oh, it's a busy night tonight. That one's. I'll take that battery out, and I'll put another one in because I think this one probably needs a charge. Yep, yeah, it's at 4.1 volts. <coughs> right. There's a switch on, on the VP1 here that will change the charge rate. And as you see, down at the bottom there, it's charging at 1 amp. I need to get this a little bit further back so it focuses. There you go. That's charging at 1 amp at the moment. And I can take that and change it to quarter amp or half amp. Here's the thing. If I was going to be charging an 18350 in there, that has a capacity of 700 milliamp hours, 
I would be looking to charge that at quarter or half an amp. This is a, a, a fairly high capacity. It'll take a one amp charge. If you're not sure, go slower rather than faster. And certainly um, the Panasonics and the AWs, the IMRs, will all take a faster charge up to, uh, up to the full amp. That's interesting. There we are, we've made contact now. And that, as you can see, that's now starting to overcharge. And let's see what happens. And it's stopped. It's realised where it's at and it's stopped. So that's all good. That's been in and out of the charger something chronic. Bottom <coughs> line on it is, if you've got anything less than a thousand milliamp hours, don't charge it at an amp. Charge it at half an amp or a quarter amp. Anything above that, you can charge at an amp. That's, that's the easiest rule of thumb. Um, it does take a long time at half, at half an amp. Leanna Lawless is right. It does take a long time. But again, this is about not taking chances, really, and being sure of what you're doing. If it's a small battery, it'll not take that long to charge anyway. Um, Silver Zero 74 is handling this 4.6 volt charge quite well. Uh, if the meter is bad, he says, the battery should be reacting badly to a 4.6 volt charge. And, and Heiko correctly says, if it's a 2000 milliamp hour 18650, it will take a one amp charge. It will. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So what about this Twitter thing? Shall we move on to that, Chris? Yeah. We'll move we on to Twitter. Time. This got posted today on Twitter. <clears throat> this is from Monica... Kosinska, who is the boss lady of the European Public Health Association, EFA. And during the course of a conversation um, on Twitter with Fergus Mason, I dived in, and I do apologise, Fergus, for diving into your conversation, but I asked the question, I said I was more interested not in who'd funded them, but what funding they had refused. And this is what she said. We turned down numerous of offers, money offers, from pharma to lobby against e-cigs. <laughs> this was big pharmaceutical companies offering money to otherwise respectable organisations to lobby against e-cigs. And I think that is a little bit wrong. But it's there and it's now on film. That would be the effort, the effort thing as very boring has said so there you go that's where it was all coming from and thanks fergus mason said it's quite all right thank you for giving me the opportunity i i i, I had heard rumors about this for quite a while and we finally got it from the horse's mouth that the big pharmaceutical companies and my understanding is there were six separate offers of money to effa to lobby against e-cigs the way we wanted e-cigs um, sorted out as part of the TPD. I'm hoping that uh, members of the mainstream press will be picking up on this. Certainly that kind of admission is gold, absolute gold. And we've got the stage. We're nearly out of time, Chris. <laughs> we certainly are. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> it always does, but it's, well, it's an interesting subject. So there you go. Yes. Um, Fergus has just said it's not on Twitter now. She's burned the evidence. It is. Because it's been screenshotted by a number of people and it's going to keep getting retweeted. Um, and I've also got it screenshotted, so it's going to keep on getting tweeted. We know. It's there. It's out there. Um, that particular stable door was unbolted. <coughs> the horse has gone. Pointless shutting it now. The She's put that there. on. She can't turn around and say she was misquoted, can nope, she? Nope, not at all. That's why we screenshotted <coughs> it. And everybody that did screenshot it, well done. A uh, Disco Des has asked, can we get in info under the free freedom of information rules? Yes, you can. Freedom of information requests can be made. It's all good. All good. Um, and yes, I, I had actually intended to get through the battery yes. stuff in about half an hour um, or less. I, I I don't know where the time goes. Chris? have to cover that other stuff next week. The amount of week. times I've heard that, 
you know, that we start off when we're going to cover this, we're going to cover that, we're going to cover the other, and it doesn't happen. But that's good because at least, you know, chat have had a lot to ask about things like this, and uh, it means that we've covered as many things as they can come up with. And perhaps there'll be more again next week, which will help any beginner out there. Because that's what it's all about, helping the beginners. Yes. Well, that's it. Batteries and charges. And it's stimulated quite a, quite a debate, hasn't it? Mm. Um, I will say, Steffi, Steffi, grand last Steffi, um, who apparently is going to be knitting on stage if pre-show sure chat is anything to go by. I've got no idea why. Um, she has, she has reminded me to tell everybody and remind everybody, keep your charges clean. Your ego charges, as Kate was saying, <laughs> keep them swabbed out, keep them clean, keep the contacts clean on all of your charges. Look after your charger and it will look after you. That's the easiest way to put it. There's really nothing to worry about with batteries. There's not a great deal of techie knowledge uh, to, to, that you need about them. Go to batteryuniversity.com if you want more information. It's a great resource. And if you want to get really techy about stuff, it, it's, there's some fabulous information on there. Um, but we have run out of time. And we'll pick up on all kinds of other stuff in shows to come. Just a quick reminder, tomorrow night we've got Marco Van Basten with Vapor Scene at 9 o'clock. And at 9.45, on its own dedicated page, our German language programme, DE Talk, featuring Steffi and Thomas and Mark and the rest of the team. On Wednesday night, are we still uh, team talking, Chris? We are still team talking. Wednesday night will be team talk. That's completely off the cuff and unscripted, much like tonight, really. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very similar. Um, Thursday night we'll be back with VT Talk and I'm trying to track a very special guest down. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to manage it so I'm not going to give you any names at the moment. But Sav and I will be back on Thursday night with VT Talk and we'll look forward to seeing you then. And then on Sunday night Dave's Tackle Box with Dave Kitson will be back. Every night of course at 10 o'clock RY4 Radio takes to the airwaves and you can go there and chat, chill out, relax and enjoy yourselves there. Um, so there's a full week every week for everybody. It's been great spending the last hour with you. My thanks to you, Chris, for uh, doing the Savalike thing tonight because you trained her. She, she learned everything she knows from you. Um, and thanks to she Kate. She was passing everything on to me. Don't worry. She's dead good, isn't she? Um, and, she is. and, and and thanks to you, Kate, thanks as well for, for joining us as usual. Very interesting. Keep me on the right road. But most of all, mm. thanks to you for watching. Until we see you the next time. Vape on. on. Oh, aye. Before you do your vape pod, uh -huh. can I do a last word like so? Go on then. The last word's going to come from Gillis. Right. Keep your nipples clean. <laughs> <laughs> on, that, well, <coughs> on that bombshell. <laughs> vape on. Vape hard and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till we see you next time, take care of one another, be good and good stay night. lucky. Cheery bye. Good, good night. night. Say good night, Chris. Good night. <laughs>